I want you to take your Bible and turn with me now to the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke chapter 14. And we're looking today at one of the hardest sayings of Jesus that we find in all the scriptures in this 14th chapter of Luke. There's an interesting story in the Old Testament in 2 Samuel about an encounter by King David and an old man whose name was Barzillai. David was forced to flee from his throne when his son Absalom made an attempt to overthrow him. And so David arrived in a place called Maenaim, and he didn't have a great deal to support himself or the people who were with him. And while he was there, the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 17 that they were hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And three men came to David in the wilderness, and they supplied his needs. One of those men was a man named Barzillai. He was a wealthy sheep farmer. He was a man who stood for the king, and he provided the needs of the king, though he had to sacrifice to do it. So Barzillai is a good example for us of a person who was willing to adjust his life to the life of his king. Now as believers in Jesus, that's the way the Bible teaches that we are to live. We've learned as we've studied how to experience God that we don't ask God to bless what we're doing, but we look to see where God is at work and when we find where God is working, we join Him there. We work with God where He's working. And when we do that, God is the one who gets the glory. It's about Him, and it's not about us. And so as believers in Christ, this is exactly what God wants for, for you and me. He wants us to adjust our life to Him. He wants that for every believer. He wants that for every church. And so look with me at this sixth reality in our study of experiencing God. Here's what it says. We must make major adjustments in our life to join God in what He's doing. Now think about that. That means that once we recognize where God is working, then it requires us to make a major adjustment in our life in order to join Him in what we're doing. And that's what Jesus is talking about here in Luke 14. So I want to ask you to stand with me and let's look at these verses. These are some pretty hard sayings of Jesus. And think with me here about what He says. Verse 25. Now great multitudes went with Him, and He turned and said to them, If anyone comes to Me and does not hate his father and mother wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who see it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. Now look at verse 33. Jesus said, so likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. That's a hard saying of Jesus. He's talking about adjusting our life to his. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, may your sweet Holy Spirit just take complete control in here this morning. We open our hearts because we want to hear you. Lord, please help me not to get in your way. Just speak.
through your word and your servant to our hearts and help us to hear and to be willing to do what you speak about in this text. Help us, Lord, to understand today what it really means to adjust our life to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please have a seat. When we think about genuinely and sincerely adjusting our life to God, I want you to think with me about that. What does it really mean to reach a point in our life where we're willing to say, I'll adjust my life to God, to do whatever God says I am to do? Well, Jesus teaches us here first that means we can't stay where we are and go with God. We just can't stay where we are in our walk and go with God. Every time God spoke to someone in the Bible about something He wanted them to do, they had to adjust their lives to Him. And once they did that, God was able to accomplish His purpose through them. But if they refused to make that adjustment, then they were never able to see what God had for their lives. Once we express our belief in God through Jesus, you see, the Bible teaches then we demonstrate our belief through our faith and our obedience. And obedience is just adjusting our life to God's will. It's making major adjustments in our life to do what God asks us to do. We see a lot of different examples of that in the Bible. Noah had to adjust his life to God to build the ark. Abraham had to adjust his life to God to father a nation. Moses had to adjust his life to God to lead the people out of Egypt. David had to adjust his life to God to leave his sheep and become king of Israel. And Peter, Andrew, James, and John all had to leave their fishing business to follow Jesus. You see, all these people had to make great adjustments in their life in order to demonstrate their belief in God. They had to put aside their life goals. They had to put aside their desires and yield everything to God. And the moment they did that, God was able to accomplish His purposes through them. Now here's the key. We cannot continue life as usual and go with God at the same time. If we're going to go with God, we have to make major adjustments in our life to join God in what He's doing. And that's what Jesus is talking about in verse 33 when He said, Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. God may be calling somebody in this room this morning to, to give up your job and go to seminary and be trained as a missionary and go to the mission field. He's waiting for you to adjust your life to Him. God may be calling someone here to sell your business and start a ministry to help the poor. The question is, have you come to a place in your life where you are willing to yield everything, your desires, everything to God in order to follow Him? That's what Jesus is talking about. Now you may be thinking, well, God will never ask me to do that. God will never ask me to make any major adjustments to my life. Yet the Bible shows us God even required His own Son to do that. In 2 Corinthians 8 9, the Bible tells us that Jesus emptied Himself of position and wealth in heaven in order to join the Father in providing salvation for us through His death on the cross. He was willing to give it all up in order to adjust His life to the Father. So we think about what Jesus says here. And He's telling us that we can't stay where we are and go with God. That once we recognize where God is at work, He calls us to adjust our life to Him. Here's the second thing Jesus is telling us, I believe, in this text. And that is that God wants absolute surrender. Look at what He said again in verse 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. That's absolute surrender. I think in Scripture of the rich young ruler 
and how he was unwilling to make the necessary adjustments to Jesus. He considered his possessions more important than Jesus. And Jesus knew that. And that's why when the young man came to Jesus with heaven on his mind, and he said, how can I have eternal life? And he really meant that. He wanted eternal life. And Jesus said, give away everything you have to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible says that he walked away. And you know, Jesus let him go. He had to make a decision. And he was unwilling to adjust his life to God. What kind of adjustments do you think God might ask you to make? Do you think that God might ask you to make some adjustments in your circumstances, your job, your home, maybe your actions, your praying, your serving, your giving? Or how about adjustments in your relationships, your family, your friends? Or maybe God will even ask you to make adjustments in your thinking, in your preferences, your prejudices, your past, or your potential. Sometimes God asks us to make several adjustments at once. And any time that we go from where we are to where God is working, we have to go from our way of thinking to, to God's way of thinking. And that requires an adjustment. So are we willing to do that? Are we really willing to adjust our life to God? C.T. Studd, who was a missionary to China and India and Africa, said... If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice is too great for me to give to Him. And isn't that true? Amen? Because of what Jesus has done for us, should we not be willing to make any adjustment that He asks us to make? You see, obedience is costly. And I want you to see that. Not only we cannot stay where we are and go with God, and God asks for complete surrender or absolute surrender, but... Jesus teaches us here that obedience to God is costly. We can't know and do God's will without paying a price. And that's the reason, honestly, that so many people walk away from Jesus. And that's the reason that the majority of churches in the United States today are, are declining or plateaued. It's because we're unwilling to pay a price. In fact, we see an example of that in John chapter 6, you don't have to turn there, but John chapter 6 verse 66 says, From that time many of His disciples went back and walked with Him no more. You see, this brings us to a decision time. We have to decide whether we're willing to really adjust our lives to God where He's at work to join Him there. We say Jesus is Lord. Do you know when you say that, that means that Jesus can interrupt our plans anytime He wants to? When we make our plans, we want God to bless everything we're doing, but it's much more difficult when God interrupts our plans, when God comes in and turns our world upside down, and then He asks us to join Him where He is at work. That calls for an adjustment in our life that is very, very costly. Turn with me for a moment to 2 Corinthians. Paul talked about what it cost him to adjust his life to God. And let's look at part of what he had to say in chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians. And look with me beginning at verse 23. Paul said, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside the other things what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. 
it cost him to adjust his life to God. And he's talking about that. He's saying, I've gone through all these experiences in my life. That's the price I had to pay to adjust my life to God when he was calling me. I love the prayer of David Livingston, who was a missionary from Scotland in the 19th century. He gave his life to making Jesus known in Africa. He said, Lord, send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me. Only sustain me. Sever any tie but the tie that binds me to thyself. He was saying that he would adjust his life to God. Well, here's another thought, the last one. And it is this. I believe that Jesus is teaching us here that adjusting our life to God requires total dependence. Total dependence is necessary if we're going to really join God where He's at work and adjust our life to Him. We have to move from doing work for God according to our abilities and our gifts and our preferences and our goals and being totally dependent upon Him to call us wherever He wants to call us, to ask us to do whatever He wants us to do. We're just totally dependent upon Him. And listen, if we depend upon anyone or anything other than God, we're just asking for failure. You've heard me say it before. Methods and programs are never the key to accomplishing God's purpose. The key is our relationship with God. And so God calls us to Himself. And He asks us to adjust our life to Him. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He's, he's confronting us with the question, will we adjust our lives to Him? On August the 13th, 1727, God found a little church that He eventually used to turn the world upside down. On that day, while they were having communion, God very deeply touched a group of Moravian Christians. The encounter they had with God that day was so great that they all offered their lives unreservedly to God. They committed themselves to pray as a church 24 hours a day. And do you know that lasted continuously for 100 years? They did it. For a hundred years. More missionaries went out from that church into the world in those 100 years than all the other combined missionaries of all other groups during that period of time. One of their missionaries so significantly impacted the life of John Wesley that God later used Wesley to spark the greatest revival in the history of England. Listen. God can do that with any Christian. God can do that with any church that will genuinely adjust their life to Him. But if we tell God what we're going to do and ask Him to implement our plans, then God will not bless us. You remember old Barzillai at the beginning of the sermon? He did things pretty well in the beginning. Well, David's men killed Absalom and ended the rebellion. And on the way back to Jerusalem, David stopped to see Barzillai. And he asked the old man to go back with him to Jerusalem. Think about it. An invitation to live with the king. And Barzillai began to make excuses. He said, it's too far. I'm too old. I can't leave my family King David said, all right. And he looked out there and there was another man there whose name was Chimham. He said, Chimham, you come. You go with me. And Chimham went in Barzillai's place. He took Barzillai's blessing because Barzillai wouldn't go. He adjusted his life to the king. You see, folks, if we're unwilling to adjust our life to King Jesus, if as a church we're unwilling to adjust our life to King Jesus, then He's going to find a chimham. He'll find somebody else. And He'll say, they won't go. You come. 
and go with me. My prayer for each of us individually and my prayer for our church collectively is that we will really look to see where God is at work. And once we find where He's at work, that we will adjust our lives to Him. And all God's people said, let's stand together and bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, thank You for these precious folks who make up this church family. Lord, how I pray that You would bless them. And how I ask You now, O Lord, to let Your Holy Spirit work in this place, in our hearts, in our lives. O God, help us to be willing to adjust our lives to You. When you call us to do things that are uncomfortable, when you ask us, Father, to join you where you are at work, Lord, help our hearts to just be open and pliable and moldable so that we'll just say, yes, Lord, whatever you want. Let us be your bond slaves with no mind of our own or no will of our own, just the desire to join you. Lord, give us that kind of spirit that we may glorify your name and reach people for Christ in this community. In the name of Jesus, we humbly pray. And the saints of God said, Listen, the invitation this morning is just be obedient to the Spirit of God. I mean, the Spirit of God may be speaking to your heart about adjusting your life to God in a particular area of your life. Just obey Him. Just be obedient to Him. There may be somebody here and the Spirit of God is calling out to you to open your heart and life to Jesus Christ, to let Him forgive you and let Him save you. Now listen, be careful. Don't be like Barzillai and say no and miss the gift of salvation that Jesus has for you. Open your heart to Him and come this morning and be saved. Invite Jesus into your life. There may be folks here who want to join up with this church, and the first step is coming forward. So whatever the Spirit of God is saying to your heart, you listen and you obey, you come.